Ezekiel chapter 24. Moving on. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, ninth year of the captivity, can be dated. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, so again, we get a date and we get inspiration. Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even this same day. The king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. Ninth year, tenth month, tenth day. And utter a parable unto the rebellious house, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Set on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it. Gather the pieces thereof into it, even every good piece, the thigh, the shoulder, Fill it with the choice bones. What you're going to do is you're going to make a stew. You're going to make a broth and you've got the best in it. The thigh. Gather the pieces together. Every good piece. The thigh. The shoulder. Fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock. The best one. And burn also the bones under it. And make it boil well. Let them seethe the bones of it therein. Wherefore thus saith Lord God. Woe to the bloody city. Murderous city. To the pot whose scum is therein. <laughs> okay. Whose scum is therein. And whose scum is not going out of it. Bring it out piece by piece. Let no lot fall upon it. Now we read a couple verses back here. We read the dross of iron, lead, brass, tin. You got the best stuff in this right here. You know what? The scum is still there. The dross is still there. You're supposed to scoop that junk out and throw it away. The more you scoop that junk that comes to the top and throw it away, the better and best it's going to be. You, you scoop it away again. You just keep on scooping and scooping till you got the best with the best animal, the best uh, parts of the animal. But you know what? You're scum. That's where you get this. That's where you get the special one. Why do you call someone scum? Ezekiel chapter 24. It comes out of a Bible. You ever realize? You ever call anybody a scum? And then you got to wonder why. Would God call someone scum? His own people. Who are sinners. Who will not repent. Who will not get right. Who are loving their sins. Romans chapter 1 that we just read. For her blood is in the midst of her. Murderous. She set it upon the top of a rock. She poured it not upon the ground to cover it with dust. And... That would imply by the law they're eating animal blood. It says in the law that you know when you strike down an animal, you're to take the blood, you're to bury it in the ground and put the dust upon it. So not only is she a murderous nation, she is now eating blood with her animal, her meat diet, which is a violation of the law. For her blood is in the midst of her. She set it upon, upon the top of a rock. She poured it not upon the ground to cover it with dust, that it might cause fury to come up to take vengeance. Leviticus 17.13 I have set her blood upon the top of a rock, that it should not be covered. And let everyone see. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city. I will even make the pile for fire great. He's going to burn all the burnable stuff in the city of Jerusalem. If it can burn, God's going to have it burned. Heap on wood. Kindle the fire. Consume the flesh. Spice it well. And let the bones be burned. He's talking about the people who's going to be in Jerusalem when, when Babylon comes and destroys it. Aren't, aren't Israel, the Jews, considered sheep? Isn't that what this meat is? He's talking about the people. He says, I'm going to just burn you and burn you well and burn you to your bones are burned. No one's going to put the fire out. Heap on wood. Kindle the fire. Wood is the city. Kindle the fire. Consume the flesh, the people. 
Spice it well. Let the bones be burned. Let then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot. The, all the liquid in the pan or the pot is gone, and may burn, that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be. Because you're going to devour the whole entire thing, including the pot. You're not out of the out of the pot and in the fire fire pan. You're in the pot burning, and the pot is going to burn with you. You're going to burn inside that pot. God is saying, you're going to burn in your city. You're going to be destroyed in your city. She has wearied herself with lies. Her great scum went not forth out of her. Her scum shall be in the fire. They did not clean. They did not get rid of. And thy filthiness is lewdness. Because I, and we read about that last night. Because I have purged thee, made thee clean. That was not purged. God tried to clean them and they did not get clean. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore. Ever, ever taken a dog or, you know, you give them a bath and then you open up the back door? They're no longer clean and they enjoy it. You can wash a pig and give a pig a bath and make it smell nice. As soon as that pig sees a mud hole, it's happy again. Till I have caused my fury to rest upon thee. And I believe Peter mentions the pig that, that wows in the mire and he mentions the dog. Returning to his own vomit. That's what you want. That's your nature. You don't want to belong to God. And God has set out everything he could. If you're involved in any kind of witnessing to lost people, you know what this is talking about. You try in prayers and tracts and anything you can. And you know what? They're just going to go back to their filthy ways. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to pass. I will do it. I will not go back. Neither will I spare. Neither will I repent. According to thy ways, according to thy doings, shall they judge thee, saith the Lord God. And also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Inspiration, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thy eyes with a stroke. Read on. Yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep. Neither shall thy tears run down. What's that verse talking about? I have no idea what that verse. Oh, the listening English. Oh, my. I got to get a new Bible. Let's keep reading. Forbear to cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Somebody's going to die. Bind the tire upon thy head. Bind the tire of thy head upon it. And that's a head ornament. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet. And cover not thy lips. And eat not the bread of men. So here's a here, here's here's some way he's died. Here is putting a tire on and off, and here's a, a meal. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and even my wife, the desire of thy eyes, verse 16, not the old lady, not the battle axe, not that old woman, not my hindrance. Whatever men would call their wives, whatever they, uh, the Bible says, the desire of their eyes. We don't even know how old this, this couple is, but still, the desire of their eyes. The Bible says, as a husband, you're to admire, you're to rejoice, and you're to have lavish uh, response to your wife and who she is and what she is. And I did it in the morning as I was commanded. Now, to me, that's a cruel, that, uh, that's one of the things I just don't understand about God. It says that Ezekiel's wife was the desire of his eyes, and for the sins of the people, God took her. You see, I'm not saying God, I'm just saying that's one of the things that, that God does for other people. But who knows what kind of trouble she would run in as the failures come. It may have been a blessing that his wife died. And the people said unto me, What well, excuse me, wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us that thou doest so? Then I answered him, The word of the Lord came on me, saying, Inspiration, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, 
I will profane my sanctuary. Chapter 23. The excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, your wives, and that which your soul pitieth, your wife, and your sons and your daughters whom I have left shall fall by the sword. Now his wife didn't fall. She died by a stroke. I will take away from thee the desire of thy eyes with a stroke. We know how Ezekiel's wife died. She died by a stroke. We know that the wives of the children of the of the husbands in Jerusalem are going to die by the sword, and their children. You shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips. I, the only one I could see in the Old Testament covering your lips was a guy that had leprosy. Unclean, unclean. It's the only thing I could see. I don't. I've not seen that expression for the dead or anything covering your lips. You shall not cover your lips. Uh, American gesture to you, cover your lips would be shh. Nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your heads. I guess with death they take them down. The tiaras. And your shoes upon your feet. You shall not mourn nor weep. Listen, this military action is going to you're not even going to have time to weep your wife is going to die your children are going to die and you're just going to be running for your life or running with the enemy being captive you're not going to even have any emotions you're going to be too shocked you're going to be too scared but you shall pine away for your iniquities and mourn one toward another thus ezekiel is unto you a sign suffering for the people is a sign There it is. And Ezekiel was told, listen, I've already had one wife go off to heaven. I'm married again. It would be quite hard for God to tell me not to cry and not to, you miss. We don't know how long Ezekiel was married. But if it's a desire of his eyes, you know how hard it was for him not to cry? That's hard. Love hurts. And when you've been on the on the other side of a hospital bed, love hurts. And this has been a sign to Israel. You know what the you know what the cruelest part of this whole thing is? What would be the cruelest part? They don't listen. You imagine going through something for some way for God and they just don't even listen. They don't adhere. But Ezekiel and his wife are found faithful enough. They're, in the eyes of God, they're proper. According to all that he hath done, shall he do. And when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. You know, it's not recorded that Ezekiel ever asked God not to do it. I don't know if he did or not. It's not recorded. When God told Abram, I'm going to destroy Lot. I mean, I'm going to destroy Sodom. Abram got from 40 all the way down to 10 people to, to spare Lot. David cried and fasted for his little baby to be alive. And the baby died. And David got up and said, well, I'm going to go to him. He won't come back to me. And that's exactly how Ezekiel is. I mean, the guy's broke. I mean, I read this chapter. And I've been through it. I, I'm even heartbroken for Ezekiel. I'm choking up with tears. Just think about the poor guy. You have to go through all this. And God told him not to cry. And thou, son of man, shall it not be the day when I take away? Excuse me. The day when I take from them their strength. 
Now the context of what from verse 15 on is then the wife. If the context is still the wife, as a wife, you know what your job is for your husband? You're supposed to strengthen him. And he will get down. He will get upset. He will be beaten. He will have, and you're to step up and, you know what? Give him some muscle. Help him. Guide him. You're to help me. The joy of their glory. Where can, What else can you find that? In what we've read so far from 15 on, the wife is to be the joy. And I even see amongst Christians, all the Christians that I know, their wife is not their joy. She's become a hindrance. Do you realize your conduct, husband, husband to be? You will give an account on your reflections and your actions towards your wife. The desire of their eyes. Isn't that what it said in verse 16 about Ezekiel's wife? It's been talking about the wife. Isn't it funny how we've gone from a cooking pot of broth to the wifehood. The one that makes this broth. The one that makes the dinner. I don't know, and I, I don't know what the connection is. I'm just maybe somebody can figure what. Here is a a job that a woman does. She's cooking, and now we're seeing what the what she is to be to her husband. And that whereupon they set their minds. You're supposed to set your mind upon your wife, not internet pictures or magazine pictures or other women it's what God just said in verse 25 then their sons and their daughters I forget which book that Paul writes to one of the churches the epistles is God Jesus Christ the husband the wife, the children, he talks about slaves and servants as employers, employees. There is a biblical, scriptural ground for a ladder of the family. Children are under the husband and wife. The job is under the husband and the wife and the children. You do not ever mess that up. You put the children ahead of your spouse. You put your job ahead of your children. Or you, you put your wife above God. You put your, your son or your daughter above Jesus. You've sinned. Ezekiel 24, you just read through your Bible. Hey, look at that. I finished through the Bible. Read my three and what we miss by not reading and studying. We have seen what God sees in a woman to be to her husband. A delight. And not all the time. Listen, there's fights, there's arguments, there I mean you get upset each that, that happens. That's two people living together, but do you get over it? I love my wife dearly. I buy her things just because I love her, not because of uh, a holiday or because, you know, I buy flowers for her. And people were, oh, what'd you do wrong? I absolutely did nothing wrong. What are the flowers for? I'll come out. I love my wife. And the way they shriek and, oh, what? You don't do that for yours? And I'm happy to say I bought because I love her. Always. Why else would I have married her? Must be something else there. I can think of many reasons why people get married and they don't love each other. That's not the case for me. And that's not the case for the Bible. Then he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee. 
Ezekiel, I assume. And if that's Ezekiel, they're going to come to Jerusalem. Guess where they're going to end up? In Babylon, where Ezekiel's waiting. They think they're going to run from Jeremiah, and there's Ezekiel. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, Ezekiel, what's up? I told you, war. Oh, man, shut up. Man, we just heard that back there. It's been going on here, too, the Jews would be saying. Imagine these Jews that come with, with cross notes with Jeremiah and cross notes. Ezekiel. Oh, cool. Remember that one part we read that you see? Wonder if Ezekiel and Jeremiah were saying that at the right time at the same time? It says, cause thee to hear it with thine, with thine ears. You know what Ezekiel's going to hear? What Jeremiah saw. What Jeremiah witnesses his eyes from that prison bar walls and windows is going to be told in the ears of Ezekiel. Isn't Jerusalem called the mother? It's going to be like losing your mother, losing your wife. In that day shall thy mouth be opened to him which escaped. Remember his mouth has been shut only when God, remember we read that? It said, the, the, the tongue shall be cleaved to your mouth unless I should. Every time Ezekiel opens his mouth, you know why he says? Now look, now look, get this. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me saying. You know why we've been reading that? I've been saying inspiration every single chapter that we've seen that. Every time we see that. Because Ezekiel's mouth was holded to the fact that unless God wanted him to speak, he was not able to speak. When they come to tell Ezekiel what's going to happen, his mouth is loose. I forgot what chapter that's back. But you go back and you'll find it. And no more dumb. God made him dumb unless God wanted him something. That's why you've been reading. Also the word came unto me saying. Also the word came unto me saying. That's why you've been reading that. And thou shalt be a sign unto them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Isn't it great to know the Lord after you've been destroyed, destructed, defeated, and your wife and children are gone and have been killed, and the destruction is burning, there's flame, there's other there's rubble, and there's just that's a great way to know God, isn't it? Three twenty six is where he's, his mouth is loose, my wife told me. How would you like to know I am the I am the Lord, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, to the lake that burns with fire. How would you like to know the Lord then? Is that when you want to learn the Lord? Is that when you want to know the Lord? Is that when you want to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord before he casts you off in hell? Or would you like to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, and to receive the gospel that Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and arose again according to the scriptures, that you may have life and know the Lord today by the testimony, by the merit of Jesus Christ before you know the Lord as he throws you off into hell? you got a choice. You think Ezekiel knows the Lord? <laughs> I know he knows the Lord. Does everybody around him know the Lord? Absolutely not. Then shall you know that I am the Lord after I've caused judgment and destruction upon you. 